Welcome to the Bring Your Worth Show, Bring Your Worth TV. I'm your host, Damon Brown. Let me get connected with you guys on Amazon, and then we'll keep it moving. So good to see y'all today. Um, it's been a really interesting and, and busy day and fun day in a lot of ways, because I'm talking about one of my favorite subjects today, which is making a living as a freelance writer. I'm about to dive in. I know some of y'all are excited about this episode too, because I reached out to y'all. Y'all heard about the episode, so I look forward to, to hearing about from y'all later on the episode. So it's Bring Your Worth TV. Come to you every most Wednesdays and Sundays at 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. If you do not want to miss the episode, you can subscribe. You can do the little notification and all that, and you'll get a heads up whenever a new episode arrives. I am the author of the new book, The Complete Bring Your Worth Collection, my collected works, pretty much all of them from the past. Oh, my gosh. The first first um, book in the Bring Your Worth series came out when uh, my second son was, he must have been a few months old. Yeah, he must have been about six months old when it first came out. He just turned seven a few months ago. So there's like a seven years, seven years of good stuff in there. The links are below. It comes out on October 20th. If you want a signed copy from me, just come to DamonBrown.net. I will hook you up. Happy to send you a signed copy with all that good stuff. But you can get it on Amazon. You can also go to that bookshop.org, which supports local bookstores. I'm an indie publisher. So support all of us as much as you can, particularly during these, these, these kind of chaotic times when it comes to doing your own independent business. All the links are right below. And if you're on Amazon, the link should be showing up for y'all. All right, so my main thing is helping you as a side hustler, solopreneur, otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur. I've done two startups myself while taking care of my kids at home. And it's been such a fun and interesting journey. The Complete Bring Your Worth Collection talks about that journey. So be sure and check it out. But this show is an extension of this journey. This is episode, let me check, 339. So I've been connecting with y'all 339 times as of today. <laughs> and some bonus episodes here and there. Thanks for rocking with me. I appreciate y'all. If you want to support the channel, be sure and subscribe below or check it out. In case you missed it, to celebrate so many episodes being done, we had a marathon of all the live streams from last year. It was long, it was about nine hours. <laughs> if you caught my live stream yesterday, you could tell how tired I was. I'm a little, got a little bit more energy today, which is good. But it was nine hours long, and it talks about everything from emotional intelligence to um, obviously making, making your next year profitable to how to build your business from scratch. All those things are covered in there because all the stuff that we covered in the past year. Um, it's all uh, time-coded, which is what they call it over here in, in YouTube land and in TV land. And so if there's a certain episode you want to see, just click on the link. You can go to it. Or if you want to just absorb the whole thing, I love listening to these kind of podcasts in audio form. So if you're, I mentioned it yesterday, I, I take walks in the nearby uh, hills and mountains around here, over here in Las Vegas. Perfect for that. So if you want to plug it into, your, turn on your, your YouTube Go to bringyourworth.tv, put it on, and then just listen to it. I used to do a lot of road trips, too, mostly before I had kids, and they're perfect. I've done a couple cross-country road trips. This is one of those joints, so be sure and take advantage of it for sure. This Sunday, I'm super excited about this. I've been a, a longtime member of the American Society of Journalists and Authors. They're at asj.org. We'll talk about them more later on the channel or later on the show. I did their keynote over the summer, which was great. I used to be part of their board of directors, so it was kind of a, a homecoming because I hadn't connected with them in a while, particularly since the pandemic happened and there haven't been a lot of in-person things. This one is virtual, it is audio, and it is premiering for y'all in three days, two days, this Sunday, 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 which is September 10th. So Sunday, September 10th at 1.11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. It's always when my shows premiere. Check it out. It's about a half an hour. It is about building your most future resilient career. I talk about AI, not Alan Iverson for us old heads. <laughs> talk about artificial intelligence. Um, I'm talking about bringing your worth. And I'm talking about how to make a sustainable living as a writer. So if this is your vibe, please check out the keynote. Come through, show your support. But more importantly, get that game. Again, the keynote's about a half an hour. And there was such a great conversation that we had at the ASGA conference this past summer. 
Again, it's at asha.org if you learn more about the organization. And when the keynote premieres, in fact, you can click the link right now, right below there, you can watch the entire thing and get access to most of the conference through a special link that ASJ gave me. Click on there and you'll be able to learn more about it if you want to do a deep dive after this episode, which leads to today's show. Begin freelance writing. I've talked about this in quite a few of my keynotes. A lot of those will be showing up in the upcoming live sessions. By the way, I'll be having live sessions every single day, workday, not weekends, workday through this month, through September. So you'll see a lot of live content. I'll have the schedule for up, up for it soon, but there'll be some interesting topics that are coming up, including growing your business, including getting your book published and all these different details. Be sure and tune in. Again, subscribe. It's going to be a really fun September for all of us. If you're familiar with my work, you know that my background is journalism. I have two degrees in journalism, master's in magazine publishing from Northwestern, and I've been a freelance writer for a very long time. <laughs> we'll put it like that. You know, if I put an age to it, it'll make me feel really, really old, and it'll be embarrassing. But <laughs> being a freelance writer is different because you have to always, always be closing, as I used to say in Glengarry Glen Ross. I wouldn't recommend anything else from the movie, classic movie, but that thing, ABC, that's a big part of it because when you're an independent writer or you're doing independent writing on the side, which is totally cool too, you have to continually find out who you're going to write for first. Now I'm not talking about blogging for yourself or even in my case where I have this TV show with bringing your worth that TV. I'm talking about actually contributing to the playboys, the New York Post, the ARPs, the family circles, a lot of these publications that I've been fortunate enough to contribute to over the years. So today's Q and A is going to talk about that talking about writing for mainstream and even slightly avant-garde, which I've done, publications, newspapers, magazines, websites, whatever, it will work. Even if it's a blog, I'm talking about blogs that are actually owned by someone else that's actually part of a bigger system. So we're talking more mainstream versus I want to start creating. That's a different discussion. So today we're going to talk about the, the best tools, and I'm also going to share the biggest questions that I get from people who are interested in freelancing and where to start with it. The first question I often get is, <laughs> no pun intended, I kind of I kind of kind of buried the lead there and kind of spoiled the lead too. How do I start? How do I start and begin freelance writing? So freelance writing, basic definition. You approach a publication and you say, hey, I want to do this particular article for this particular audience, your audience happens to match the, the audience that I wanna reach, and I would like to do this, this article. It's called a pitch. We'll get into the pitch in a second. So just like you would pitch anything else, you know, when, um, if you work for a, uh, a coffee shop and someone comes up and they're like, well, I'm not sure what I want. And you say, well, you, you try our new Frappuccino, or if you really wanna push it, you can do this. It's the same type of thing you are serving this greater publication. And in my case, I've written a long time for Playboy. So the topics that I wanted to cover fit Playboy's uh, demographic really well for many, many years. And so it breaks down to three different things. And I took some notes on this to make sure it was super clear to y'all and clear to me too. <laughs> Sometimes you do things for so long and then you have to explain, explain it to someone else and you're like, wait a second. You start with an important topic, a topic that might be important to you, but more importantly is important to a particular audience that you want to serve. Number two, you have to explain or show why you're the one to write it. Why are you the one to write it? Do you have access to certain people that you interview for this article? Are you an expert or know a lot about this particular topic? And so that makes you uniquely qualified. And lastly, how you can actually reach the group that needs to hear it. And that would help determine what publication you would pitch something for. So if it was something about the benefits of retiring early, let's say in your 50s, that might not work for Playboy magazine because the demographic that they're aiming for are say 24 to, to 45, right? But for ARP magazine, who I've been a regular writer for, 
uh, for a while. And I used to have a column with him, a video game column, believe it or not, about 10, 20 years ago, a long time ago. That would be ideal for them because they're trying to set it up so that so that people will understand and think about retirement. And it might not be their exact demographic because the person that gets ARP might be already in retirement, but they might be able to pass it on to some of their kids who are thinking about retirement. And also the ARP crowd is more likely to be talking about retirement than the Playboy crowd because the Playboy crowd, the guys that read it and gals, whomever, they're not trying to think about retirement. The Playboy has the energy of a youthful publication. So you have to kind of think about what the topic is, why it's important, why you have a certain expertise in it, and how you should use that particular publication or work with that publication to get it out there. Hopefully that makes sense. Drop a line in the comments if there's any other details that you're curious about. That's the best way I can describe what's called a query or a pitch. If you want to go a little bit deeper, and in fact, this will be I think one of the first steps, check out the American Society of Journalists and Authors. I was already hyping them up at the beginning of the show. Fantastic organization. They, along with the Writers Guild, are the two premier uh, writers organizations. You can call them unions if you like, based here in North America, and particularly in the United States, obviously with ASJA. But we have a lot of Canadian members, so shout out to you guys. You know who you are. ASJ is fantastic because they have conferences. Again, I keynoted a few months ago. They have conferences throughout the year, some of them virtual. A lot of them, though, which is where I got my bones at and really got a chance to network with people, was when they had them in person in Midtown Manhattan. I have so many memories, <clears throat> excuse me, and people that I'm still cool with to this day, and people that, like all these books right here, are books I've contributed to, or books I've published. Many of them would not have, have happened without either learning from ASJ or the connections connected to ASJ as far as being in New York, connecting with different folks, or even virtually. And there's so many things that even come from ASJ now, even though a lot of it is remote. So be sure and check them out. I think it's a good first step. There's a certain criteria that you need to hit to become an official member. That's often, they change it every year, but I believe it's like you have to have a couple of books published and or you have to, um, or more the or, have a couple of books published or be in, have a byline, which is your name in six or more publications that are considered mainstream. That could be a high order. It took me a few years to get to that point when I first started my freelance career, but they have a ton of resources that are available in general for everybody. That's what you want to work with. They also have a, um, a Facebook page and other things going on that are available, I believe, to everyone. Be sure and check them out. The resources are infinite on there. And again, the keynote that I did for ASJ a few months ago will be premiering on the channel audio only uh, this Sunday. And then there's a link. If you click that link, it'll link over to uh, right below the video it will actually link to the ASJ packages that allow anybody, whether you're a member or not, to actually get involved, check it out, and watch the whole keynote on its own, you know? Right? And ASJ is fantastic. Yeah, thank you for the note, you know? <laughs> I, I'm not hyping them up for no reason. They're fantastic. Like, they are fantastic. And they've been integral to some of the work that I've done, and, and obviously for some other folks as well. If you want some hard copy material, I do not have a physical copy because I haven't had this joint in a while. The Writer's Market, 100th edition. That's how far back it goes, right? I remember getting the Writer's Market and I was broke living in Chicago uh, in a small apartment <laughs> try, trying to get my freelance, freelance on. And the Writer's Market is essentially, I don't even have a book that's the same size of it. Let me just take all my books. If you took my last three books, including the one that's coming up, put them together, heck, bring another one. It's that big, that big. That, that's how big it is. It's huge, right? It's like a Bible. And what it does is they spend the whole year working on this, almost like a, um, an almanac, right? They spend the whole year working on this. And then they say, all right, if you're, let's use, use Playboy again for an example. Okay, if you're going to pitch Playboy, these are the main editors there. 
These are their email addresses and or the submission for their website. This is how often they come out, like, you know, 12 times a year, 10 times a year, whatever. I think they're still monthly. So 12 times a year. This is their circulation or how many um, articles or how many um, articles, how many magazines they print every month. So I'm guessing Playboy circulation. It's nowadays I'm guessing their circulation is about 7 million. That's just a guess. You can correct me in the comments if you happen to know. So 7 million copies of Playboy go out every month, et cetera. More importantly, they talk about who the head editors are and how much they pay. We're going to get into that in a second. So it gives you the whole breakdown. You can go to different websites, shout out to Freelance Success and all these other websites that are on there, which are fantastic. ASJ is one of them. This is actually something, though, where you just want to keep it on your desk. To be like, you know what? I really have an article idea that I want to pitch to uh, Writer's Digest. Who do I reach there? Now, of course, Dr. Google can, can help take care of you. Shout out to Dr. Google. It changed things because I was doing freelance writing before Google was even invented. That gives you some ideas for how long I've been doing it. But there's certain limitations to much access you're going to have. And so having something physical, again, that big on your desk is important. So check it out. I would highly recommend you uh, see what's happening with there, you know, with there, with that. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a bring your worth TV show every Wednesday and Sunday. I'm doing a special where I'm going live every single uh, every single day, every workday throughout this month. So be sure and tune in and you can subscribe right below. <laughs> My apologies. I am in a silly mood today. All right. So that leads to the next question that happens a lot and might help you on your way. How do I pitch articles? Pitching articles comes down to three basic things. At least for me, I use a three paragraph system whenever I pitch something. So let's say you're talking to Writer's Digest or you're talking to Outside Magazine. Let's work with Outside Magazine. You know what you want to say to Outside Magazine. You have an article idea. You know it will work for them. You got the editor contact or at least where to submit. Now what? Here's what you can do. Use a three-paragraph system that has worked for me really, really well. The first paragraph is essentially like the lead or the beginning of your article. In 2019 a bunch of hikers gathered at the bottom of Mount Charleston. Many of them experienced, but some of them had no idea what they were getting into and they're never heard from again. I just made that up. That's a lead. That's a lead. And if you treat it like article, you'll be like, oh, I want to keep reading. Well, what happened to, why were they never heard from again? And some were experienced, but I guess they weren't experienced enough to deal with whatever happened. Why did the inexperienced folks go to Mount Charleston, which is right here in Las Vegas? Why, why did they do that? Like, 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 so you want to kind of get their mouth watering, which mine is literally watering. I think I need some coffee. Mouth watering for whatever it is, right? That's the first paragraph to say, this is like the beginning of the story. It doesn't have to be long, just a few sentences. The second paragraph is saying what you're actually going to give the reader what the story is and what you're going to give the reader. In the story for Outside Magazine, I'm going to talk about the great storm of 2019 where such and such and such and such. The Outside Magazine readers will like it because such and such and such. So that's paragraph two. So paragraph one, basically the beginning of your story. What's your story? not telling them what the story is. We have this wonderful saying in journalism and also in public speaking, and I'm a public speaking coach as well, show, don't tell. So you wanna show them what the story is gonna be. You're not gonna tell them what it's gonna be. You show them with that first paragraph. The second paragraph, you take a step back and then you start to tell them, I'm gonna tell this story about such and such and why it's gonna serve their readers. Outside magazine readers are gonna love this because of such and such and such. Bonus points if you can point to a particular article that's similar to the one you wanna do. It's similar to 
the 2015 Outside Magazine article you had about the guy that got his arm stuck in the desert and had to cut it off. It's similar to that. The one they made a movie about. Like that, then they're like, oh, okay, not only do you know our audience, but you're up on our stuff. So you know what we're trying to do for our audience. You're trying to make the editor's job easier. That's what you're doing with the query slash pitch. The third paragraph is going to break down why you are the one for the job. So if there was an article in Red Book about being a single mom living in Tehran, I wouldn't be like, I would not be qualified for many reasons to, to write that article. I'm just making stuff up. But I wouldn't, wouldn't be qualified. But if it was like about an entrepreneur who went through some ups and downs and now is able to figure out how to take care of his family and so forth, okay, I have some expertise in that. That's what the third paragraph is, is establishing why you are the writer for it. Because you can have a great idea, but if you can't access the people you need to interview for the story and or if it's more of an opinion per POV perspective piece, if you haven't had the experience for it, then you don't know. I can do an article about selling my company because I sold my comp company a handful of years ago. I can't do an article about getting funding from other um, from like a venture capital firm or from an investment or whatever, because my startups were actually bootstrapped. So I didn't get investment. So I can interview people about it, but I can't say I did that. Third paragraph is where you're going to establish your expertise. Why are you the person for the job? The big secret here is that all magazines have staffs. So they have writers that they full salary, health benefits, 401k, they, they're set. So even if you didn't approach them, in most cases, with a particular article, they still would find a way to get articles into their magazine because they got a staff. So with that first paragraph, with you telling the beginning of a compelling story, the second paragraph where you're talking about what the story is and how it's going to serve the readers, and the third paragraph, most importantly, why you're the person for the job, then they're like, it's worth taking a risk to have this outside person come in and have a conversation about this potential, potential piece. That's a whole different level. And that's kind of the, the, um, the journey that you're gonna go through if you're going to get a freelance article published. Very few publications are 100% freelance. Most of them have some type of internal writer or they call them uh, contributing writers, in some cases, contributing editors. That's it's something called the masthead, which is, is at the beginning of every magazine, it's also on most blogs, where it'll list out the editor-in-chief, the publisher, who owns the publication. All that is called the masthead. That's all those people are on staff. If they're on staff and or regular contributors, then you need to cut through that to get an article published. It's, it's really key to understand that there's um, a whole dynamic that's happening out and they have a whole system that frankly has nothing to do with you. Your job is to make sure that their system is on top of things. I did a keynote uh, a handful of years ago, quite a few years ago actually, for also for ASGA. It was back in San Diego, back when I lived over there. They had a, um, a joint meeting, ASGA and SPJ, the Society of, of Professional Journalists. Shout out to y'all. And I was like, why journalism matters even after journalism? And it's worth checking this, this keynote out just because I talk about how we're in a bit of a post-journalism phase, particularly at the time. This is a good six, seven years ago. We're at a post-journalism phase where magazine sales were going down. Newspapers, obviously, were going through what they're going through, still going through. And we were pivoting to video, ironically. I'm telling you on video. We were pivoting to video and other things. And me explaining why journalism still matters, though. It's just in a different form. And I break down exactly why it's so valuable that you build your own brand and not be dependent on an outside magazine to get notoriety. It's really important that you build up your channel. Like in my case, it's really important that you build up your newsletter list, which I've talked about ad nauseum here. <laughs> Go to the previous episodes, particularly the marathon I had a few days ago um, with, the, um, with making things profitable. 
the link is below. I get into that. But check that out. It's important to for us to build up ourselves and not just depend on such and such giving us the shine. So sometimes you have an article that you want to get out there and no one's rocking with it or the publications don't hear you. And sometimes you got to publish it yourself. One of the reasons why I started this channel and there's so many things I'm able to address here, so many ways I'm able to do it that the publications and the folks that I was working with didn't quite see. And sometimes make your own way. And that's an important part of the process. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're going to go through your process as far as making a living as a writer, and we'll talk about this more in the next question, highly recommend Six Figure Freelancing by Kelly K. James. Hope you're doing well. I have her book around here. It is dog-eared. But again, as I say almost every episode, my boys move stuff around. It's somewhere in the house, but it's been with me for a while. It's She's fantastic as far as breaking down how to make a living as a freelancer, what you should talk about. Um, she is a former lawyer, so she doesn't mess around with the numbers and the time. Like, Well, she messes around with the numbers. You know what I'm trying to say. She takes it very seriously, which makes her fantastic. It is worth checking out the book. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and as you start to go through your uh, process, it's important to find uh, some type of, what's the word I'm looking for? Levity. To, be, to, to stay grounded. That's what I'm trying to say, to stay grounded. One of my favorite books, period. One of my favorite books. I have the old school version. Yeah, y'all don't have this. <laughs> they don't make this one anymore. You see, it's dog-eared. Dojo Wisdom for Writers, <clears throat> excuse me, Jennifer Lawler, fantastic. It is short, it is sweet, and what folks will not tell you about freelance writing, if you decide to make it a full-time profession, or even if you do it on the side, it can be very, very hectic. You can have editors that come in and want last-minute changes, but they're about to go to press, which means that they're about to publish something. So that means you can do it quickly. You might have certain sources, which means people that you're interviewing and you might not be able to access them in a certain way. And so you're trying to do this with the deadline and all that stuff. It's even the financial ups and downs, which we'll get into in a minute. This helps you stay level. It's a fantastic book. As you can tell, there's my old copy. The new version's out. In fact, I think this is under Jennifer's um, uh, publishing imprint, which is fantastic. You know, I rock with that. I got Bring It Worth Publishing. Shout out to Jennifer. You know, I love you over there. You're doing fantastic work. And she's an author, like not just author, you know, like stuff I do, but author like fiction. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like novels and stuff. This, the pre-order link just came up. I just got the notification on it. It's The Dreamer. I believe it'll be out in the next couple of months. I need to go, go ahead and double check the um, the release date, but it'll be out soon. Probably, uh, I think it's the, de the the launch date's close to October 20th, which is when my book comes out, uh, the complete Bring Your Worth uh, collection. Fantasy novel, sounds fantastic. Check it out. I would be remiss if, if I didn't mention that one too. <laughs> if you're going to talk about writing and going deeper, you know, break that down. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, one quick side note on that. I was never a big fiction person. Actually, I was when I was very young. Like, my sons are 10 and 10. I was around their age. I was into fiction. I got introduced to nonfiction by, by uh, Anne Briggs Bunning. Rest in peace. Shout out to her. You know, I love you. Um, I did an episode about two years ago when she passed away. Broke my heart, but, you know. That, that's part of life. Uh, but she got me on the way as far as journalism and taking nonfiction seriously. And as I always say, I realized that nonfiction was way more bizarre than fiction because it's stuff that really happened. What I learned, though, and that's why I want to give a shout out to uh, to Jennifer's book. What I learned was that, um, excuse me, what I learned was that I could actually learn a lot more from fiction as far as structure and organization and so forth. Jennifer is actually head of a website called Club Ed. It's club, club, clubedfreelancers.com. I'll go and throw in 
to the show notes after the show is done. And so you also are talking about structure and elegance and so forth. I can talk about that all day. I learned that from fiction, from the Jennifer Lawler, Lawler, Lars, Lawlers, <laughs> can't speak today, from the F. Scott Fitzgeralds, um, from a Truman Capotes, which I would consider his stuff more fiction than nonfiction, like just getting that flow. And so if you want to learn how to write better, then you got to read better. I'll leave it at that. But congratulations, Jennifer. Last subject. This one's important. This one is super important. It's like, yeah, yeah, Damon. I'm going to go ahead and become a freelance writer. I don't do this writing on the side. Da, 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 da. But how do I get paid? How do I get my money? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Usually when you do a freelance article, you get paid in one of two different ways. The first way is by project, by completed article. I'm going to pay you $500 for this article, right? The other way is to get paid per word, which sounds bizarre if you're not used to this. So it could be 25 cents a word. It could be five cents a word. It could be $3 a word. Now, that doesn't mean that you can do a bunch of run-on sentences and just keep going. <laughs> what it means is that there's a particular uh, structure or framework for that article. Back to the Playboy example. I did a feature for Playboy and that feature was a, was a thousand words. But before I earned the right to do that feature, because I did a lot of articles before I got that Playboy feature, I was doing articles that were literally 50 words long. They were little reviews. If you guys are old school Playboy back in the 90s and, and in the early aughts, you know what I'm talking about, the reviews up front. So it'd be 50 words, 75 words, whatever. What happens when, as far as getting paid though, is that the length might not matter as much when it comes to per word, the length might not matter as much because they're paying so much per word. So when I was writing for Playboy, they would pay between a dollar and two dollars a word. So it's like, all right, so I'm gonna write this hundred word review and I'm gonna get hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, word? <laughs> and I'm a fast writer, really? <laughs> we became fast friends. Or it could be a publication, maybe a smaller publication or one with a smaller budget, whatever, where they're like, yes, we're going to give you a 5,000 word piece. You're like, great. What is it per word? Oh, well, it's, you know, a penny a word. I, what's that, $50? So, that, so in that quick example, that 5,000 word piece I might work very hard on, or at least it'll take a long term to write. Now I'm a professional writer, so it might take you longer, right? That 5,000 word piece, you're going to pay less than you would for this 50 to 100 word piece that you're getting paid a lot more for, for per word. So those are things to go ahead and keep an eye out for. Um, if you're not getting paid for the article that you're doing, then I wouldn't actually consider that freelance writing. I would consider that publicity. I would consider that uh, getting some clips. Clips are basically articles, you know, so clips, because you have to clip them out. It's old school. So newspapers are a magazine. You literally clip them out. That's why they're called clips. So <clears throat> your clip, you're getting your clips up, et cetera, et cetera. That's cool. But know that you're getting into that. I've definitely done some articles for free. But that was because I had a book to promote or I really believed in that particular organization, I looked at it as nonprofit work. Break it down. Don't justify it after the fact. Just think about it before you get involved. I think it's really important to, to have that, that breakdown right there. A related episode. Three reasons why you shouldn't sign a contract. I share this episode with all my clients I think literally all of them, have gotten, all my coaching clients have gotten it. If you're going to do stuff with your article after the fact, and we'll get into reasons why you want to do that in a moment. If you want to share it with a different website, even if you want to put it on your own website, or you want to do the article for someone else later, you have to look at the contract that you sign. Because depending on the contract, they, whoever you publish it with, whoever does the, the, they call it a first run, whoever does the first run of that article where the, they publish the article, that might be it. And that is what it is. They own that. 
it's like they wrote it. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, you need to be strategic about what you're doing with that. Even if you're like myself, where I was a longtime freelance journalist and then I got into books, there were certain articles that I wrote that I could not contractually include in my books later because of the contract I signed. So it's really important. This might be, if you're looking at freelance writing, this might be the most important video and suggestion here when it comes to watching something. The other books are great. So get all the books. But as far as watching something, this is the one. Like that's why my face looks really serious now. Like don't play with the contract. Make sure you know what you're getting into. Because if you actually own your stuff, you can do something with it. This is The Passive Writer. It was written by myself, as well as with Jeanette Hurt, who had the shout earlier. Hi, Jeanette. <laughs> this came out, oh my gosh, has to be five years now. This came out five years ago. And basically what we're breaking down, all the links are below, by the way, if you want to check it out, because I'm going to take the link off for a second. <clears throat> we came up with this book when we realized there are so many different ways that people were freelance writers creating content, working really hard. Like it could be a tough profession, working really hard and then only doing one article based on that. I'll give you a really quick example. Let's say you're doing a 5,000 word piece. For a 5,000-word piece, let's say it's not opinion. Let's say you have to interview people. Maybe you're interviewing. Sorry, my, my mic's in the way. My book's in the way of the mic. Um, let's say you're interviewing people, interview like 20 people, which I've done before for shorter articles. But then you only end up using like three of the interviews. And then maybe there's another article in there, but that's not the article that's right for that audience. That's not what you're contractually obligated to do. And maybe the piece ends up being 15,000 words, but you only use 5,000 for the actual piece. If you have the right contract, you can actually do other things with it. And passive income, I have lots of videos on it. You can click the links below. Passive income is your way of creating something once and getting paid multiple times. The books I create, even some of the articles I create, even the stuff with this show, that's bringing in types of passive income so that when I'm hanging out with my kids or my wife or I'm on the road or even when I'm sleeping, which hence the subtitle, even when I'm sleeping, that money's still coming in. That is such a key part of it. We break it down and give all that kind of insight, hopefully, when it comes to when it comes to uh, to passive income. You know, so be sure and check it out. It's been uh, well received within the writer community. So thank you all for all this all the support. I think it just had a five year anniversary. I can't believe it's that old already, but it's still extremely relevant. Maybe even more relevant now because you know. A lot of us are hustling, trying to figure out what we're going to do next. Another Q&A that I did, another live stream, about a year ago, year and a half ago, become a well-paid writer. This gives a lot more gems and even goes deeper on some of the stuff that we discussed today. Be sure and check it out if you want more insight. And I have a couple bonus content things here too. This one came out relatively recently, A Beginner's Guide to Making Freelance Money. I think we're going to have an episode in the very new future that updates this as far as going deep into making money as a freelancer. Right now we talked about pitching today, but we'll go a little bit deeper into financially what goes into it. And it gets more into the contracts, but also as far as having longevity in the game, myself, my co-author Jeanette, and even other folks just as, such as Jennifer Lawler, we've been in the game for a long time. There's reasons for that. And so I'm happy to go ahead and share as much as I can as far as getting paid as a freelancer and going from there. This is an excellent start though. And this is about 25, maybe 30 minutes long. It is worth your time if you're even waddling into the freelance market. My last suggestion, make infinite freelance money. It is not hyperbole. <laughs> it is actually true. I talk about this three bucket system that allows you to continue to make a living as a freelancer and not have too much feast and not have too much famine. It's only four minutes long. Highly recommend this video as well. As you get into the writing game, though, yeah, not going to lie. It's the contract. It's the contract one. You got to get your contracts right. Otherwise, you might be hobbling yourself later and not even realize it. And there's certain decisions that I made really early on that I would have made different decisions. 
of course, hindsight 2020. But I'm here as a ghost of Christmas future to say, get your contracts right. And then it might be fruitful later on. Everything below are um, our uh, referrals. So some of them actually have bonuses that come with it. Other ones just give you an inside track on things. So be sure and check them out. But, you know, that also helps out the channel. So thank you so much for, for the support on that. And I'm really excited to, uh, to connect with you all on Sunday. Get my link right. <laughs> on Sunday, 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 there will be a live official audio from the ASJ conference this past summer. Thank you all for letting me rock with it. Not only for having me speak there, but also allowing me to share the audio from the keynote with my viewers. If you guys go ahead and click on that, you can hit the subscribe button. You also hit notifications. There'll be a little buzz when the keynote goes live. It'll be 1, 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time this Sunday. So if you're hanging out, if there's a break during a football game, if you're chilling out with whatever, you know, having a drink in hand, you can enjoy the keynote. It's audio only, so it also works on the road or if you're walking around, whatever, whatever. If you want to have the me physically doing the keynote and you want to see the whole thing, the link is in there as well. And ASJ is offering that at a good price. All right. I will be back on Monday with more lives, Monday through Friday, all through this month of September. In the meantime, be sure and check us out on Sunday for the keynote. And this is every Wednesday and Sunday. And you subscribe for free below. Remember to take care of yourselves and others that you can always bring your worth and you can always build from now. Take care.